Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Oak Discussions. I'm your host, Kid Swift. With me as always, Mr. Brent. Doing it for the culture today. <laughs> and Webb. Hey, hey. Uh, Shana's not with us today. She had some things she had to take care of, but she will be back next week, of course. Mm-hmm. Guys, welcome back to another week. Uh, we appreciate you guys coming back. Uh, we got a lot of different things to talk about, a lot of different uh some music news stuff. Kind of getting back to roots a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Getting back to hip hop a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So that real hip hop. <laughs> that real, real hip hop. Real. We don't <laughs> want that fake shit, real shit. Like, all right. <laughs> I sound like Joe Button already. Um, oh, hold on. But okay. yeah, so we're going to get into a few things. So uh, do we want to start? How do we want to start? I'm going to let well, you guide. Well, actually, what we're going to do is um, how was y'all's weekend? It was good. Mine was good. It was busy. Uh, not, uh, I just did like yard work today, so I didn't do much today, but, um, yeah, the, as far as the actual yesterday was Derby. Uh, so if you've ever heard of Kentucky Derby, uh, here in, uh, (laughs) Kentucky, it's, uh, crazy. Usually it's usually a busy, super busy weekend, uh, for statewide. Most of the time there's parties, there's all all kind of events, but, uh, I actually worked it. So I had to get up at like about five. Then roll up to Louisville. Uh, was up there most of the day uh, doing a, a shooting and stuff uh, for our mm-hmm. broadcast for the station. And then um, we cut out at like 4.35 around that time, and then we headed back. Uh, but it was cool. It was busy. The rain sucked at first, but it kind of cleared out after so long, which was good uh, because I was worried about that. But by the time it actually like cleared out and cleared up, like <laughs> basically right when we were done, yeah, uh, it ended up being nice. It was fucking great. It was packed. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of beautiful people. A lot of money being thrown around, Ooh. of course. And, uh, and that what, payout was crazy. Yeah, oh yeah. One of my uh, one of our reporters got to uh, try the thousand uh, dollar mo- uh, not mojito. Sorry, the thousand dollar uh, mint julep. Yeah, that was like one of the stories we did. Was like how they make it, what goes into it. And then they made her one, and she tried it, and she said it was, she said it was good, because like that was what was we, good. Or? Yeah, yeah, that's how thousand dollars good. Yeah, that was the thing. She was like, she was like, I don't know if I would have paid that much for it. It was good, but I don't know if it was worth that much. But it, it was still it like great. a regular fifteen dollar mint julep, it just, just in a fancy cup, right? Well, yeah, ice, extra if ice. A, if you know where to look. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> it was like a brass, like beautiful brass, like engraved, like goblet almost and then like the tray was like rose gold it was ridiculous (laughs) but um she's actually from illinois so this was like her first time having a uh mint julep julep, yeah Mm. or anything like that so but she said she liked it uh it seemed like everybody we were kind of like making the argument throughout the day that like nobody really likes them they just drank them because it's derby and just like deal with them (laughs) (laughs) but uh they seemed pretty good we we had a good batch of them so so like mint julep to is to derby what eggnog is it's to the, Christmas yeah yeah or the holidays right yeah exactly for people not, just drink our, it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. yeah right exactly but yeah <laughs> for our secular folks <laughs> but brent how was your weekend did you get out party uh i i did pate very nice uh last night um this actual weekend has been pretty good i just thought of a question i'm gonna ask everybody and all of everybody in openton uh-huh. um that came up from last night but uh friday was good Hung out with some buddies, had some birthday, or they had a birthday, went bowling. I forget how competitive bowling can get real quick. <laughs> like, of course. <laughs> but uh, then last night, I think I hit four parties. Nice, damn. Um, hit hit this uh, Jack Honey. They had Manny Fresh as the DJ. Oh, nice. How was yeah. that? I wasn't there for that part. I only seen the video. It sounded like he put on a great set, but I left. Uh, <laughs> I left before. I didn't know Manny Fresh was going to be there. I shook hands, said what's up, went to a, a old school party, mm-hmm. uh, dressed to the nines. Very nice. And, uh, you know, boogie woogie with them. Left there, went to another party. Mm-hmm. DJ was on point. Nobody was in there. Like one of those, those great moments where DJ's like killing Kill it. it. Yeah. And then... The room barely feels like it's anybody in there. We've had that happen a few times, I feel like. And then, Where it's like, yeah, you're in a party and you're like, where's everybody? And then like the DJ's fucking tearing it up. Yeah. It was like <laughs> one of those like 
sets of like little pockets of people kept coming in. Yeah, yeah. But then people kept walking out or staying out of the actual main area where everybody would normally be That's congregated. Right, right. Yeah. So it was just like it never felt packed. Gotcha. Uh, then went to a African party. Oh, nice. And uh, when I walked in there, <laughs> it looked like it was a mix between a dance battle and the beginning of coming to America. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Like it was like thirty people in a circle, like all all doing the same dance in unison, but yeah. they were all facing each other. Okay. And then like it was those... a lot of like it almost looked like everybody was like slow grinding right. with the person in front of them. Like they was having the greatest dance of their life. Yeah. And then they was like hiking a leg up here and there. Okay. Totally weird thing. Um <laughs> I mean not weird. It wasn't weird. It was That's just awesome. interesting to see at like Three in the morning, two in the morning. Right, I was about to say. Oh, man. I was about to say this is probably halfway through the night at this point, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that I mean, that was a good time. That was yeah. a good time. Um, Very nice. And I can come back to my question after that. Had a good weekend, man. Glad I made it through Derby. Got some family time in. How about yourself, Webb? Very good. How you been doing? Um, family time, family time, family time. I uh, went over to Mount Sterling and Sharpsburg for the wife. Um, mm-hmm. Missed out on free comic book day. That is the only. That's the only gripe yeah. I had regarding yesterday. But other than that. Um, I drank just as much as I needed to to get right, mm-hmm. and I'm it's good to go. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, I did too. I missed out on a free comic book day too. Yeah, unfortunately. And yeah, the thing was, it's like I definitely wanted to look around for something new as far well, not new, but something I've been looking around for as far as with Black Panther with uh, mm-hmm. where um, I want to say it was Christopher Priest who wrote it. Um, I have half of it. I have half of the series, but I need the other half of the series, and I wanted oh, wow. to make sure to get it this year. Because I didn't want to look like I'm just riding coattails come next when year. When you get it next year. Right, yeah. <laughs> when the movie Jumping comes out. Right. Yeah. And, oh, man, Black Twitter's going to be so fucking lit when that movie comes out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. They put the, uh, what did they put up? They put up, like, the one of the costume, like, side designs. Yeah. And uh, everybody was like, oh, my God. He's like, I can't, just can't wait. wait. For this. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> it was sick, too, because I've never seen that particular costume design because he had, like, Instead of the black inlaid with the silver, it was mm-hmm. inlaid with like gold trim, and like a mm-hmm. gold like necklace with like claws on it. I was like, yeah, holy I shit! I figured, and like just already speculating off of that look. Yeah, I'm imagining that's because he's no longer, or he's now officially a king. Yeah, right. And exactly. The costume that he had in Civil War that was when he was still prince or what have you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be sick, man. They were showing up. There were like some training videos I saw that they put up. It was just a bait. He was just going through the motions, like doing training, and like it was still just like, mm. it's like it already looks good. It's like it already looks great. This movie's already got a nine. Right, yeah, <laughs> on Metacritic, yeah. And Metacrit- we've only seen costume trailers in uh, the cast. Right, yeah. I mean, God, it's probably got one of the yeah dopest cast. Um, but yeah, so a lot of music stuff. Yes, a lot of music stuff wow. or things related to music or things that mm-hmm. pretend to be related to music. Yeah. Uh, first like of all, <laughs> what's that? I like pretend to be related to music. Yeah, yeah, because we will get into that. We will yeah. get into that. But yeah. first, first and foremost, let's get into this topic here, which uh, Brent kind of, no, I'm sorry, that was you, mm-hmm. uh, kind of alluded to. On, I want to say May 2nd, mm-hmm. uh, Little Yachty was a special guest for Complex's show called Everyday Struggle. The host, Joe Button. Mm-hmm. DJ Academics, and I want to say this moderator, or I, this, which is kind of a weird thing to call her. Cause, so Joe Button's one of the hosts? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay. Joe Button and DJ Academics on that particular show. Okay. And I think her name is Nadasha or something like that. She's, okay. a, she's a moderator. Okay. And I don't know. They probably need to sit there and pay her more to have her step up on there. Let me do one thing. All right. Okay, hold on. I'm going to turn Webb's mic down just so if you're listening to this on the podcast, I'm going to do close. something real quick. Too close, Mom? No, no, no. Turn the mic is around backwards. You gotta that gold dot should be facing you. I was one. I was like, your mic always sounds like crazy better than everybody else's, and for some reason, it doesn't sound as profound. So, like, loosen it and then twist the mic so you can loosen this piece. It's a little inside baseball where we're listening, and then you should be able to just twist the mic, but then and then tighten it back on the bottom. There we go. Web is coming back in. I'm, oh, okay. I'm oh, yeah, I even is. see the I difference, got the same mic. <laughs> I even see the... Oh, did you now? The sound wave is going yeah. ham yeah, right now. Yeah, that's my... Uh... Yeah, he got, the same, he got the same one because he loves... He ah. loved that mic so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. I yeah, see it. Yeah, shout out to, uh, to Rode. <laughs> R-O-D-E. <laughs> yeah, for those mics. Those are great. 
yeah, no so sponsorship, but hey. That all yeah, that auto. I mean, if they want to. That made a huge difference. Send us all new mics, bro. Because I was like, wait a minute. I was like, your mic normally sounds insane. And for some reason it wasn't sounding as insane as it should have been. As it should have been. The bad thing is it was it was backwards and it was still picking up pretty damn good. That's wild. <laughs> As but now well. it's like perfectly clear. It All right, so like, what, what were you saying? <laughs> okay, back on topic. Back on topic. Uh, okay. The host, DJ Academics, and Joe Button, special guest, Little Yachty, and what followed became a meme-worthy event for hip hop Twitter. Well, I say, well, hip hop in quotations because mm-hmm. that's subjective nowadays. Right. Uh, the takeaway that social media got from the show was Joe's confusion about Yachty being happy, and I want to go ahead and ask y'all, what are your thoughts on that? The thing is, at first, because I am, I'm a almost 30 year old man and I've been listening to hip hop for years and I love it and it's great. I'm close enough. Shut up, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> Live, sir. Check, check the receipts. <laughs> but um, so when I first heard Little Yachty, I was like, man, it's another, I guess, whatever you want to call it, popcorn, bubblegum rapper, whatever you want to call it. But the thing is that was interesting is like he kind of completely grasped that whole notion of being that a bubblegum, whatever, like that kind of like he bought it in it. And I was like, OK, he's not trying to act like he's like this hard thug dude. He's just goofy and weird young kid. And then the other thing that made that I found interesting was this whole idea that like he's completely clean, too. Like, he doesn't do drugs, he doesn't drink or anything like that. And, like, I watch actually what really, and it's, I know it's like, like we talk about on this show multiple times, don't make judgments before you get some kind of, like, research in or get to talk. I watched that Vice um, episode on Atlanta, which is phenomenal. Noisy, Noisy, yeah, yeah. the Noisy documentary on Atlanta, which is fucking phenomenal. And it made me like all those dudes more, even, like, 21 Savage, Miga, all of them. And when they got to Yachty's part, it's like, He's just like a little brother. He's goofy. He's like found this immense fame. But then when he was talking about the reasons why he doesn't do drugs and stuff, it was like it made perfect fucking sense. Yeah. And like, but he's still, he's a kid. So like when I hear him saying like he's happy and shit, I believe him in a sense because one, there's a, there's a, there's a, I guess a filter of, what is it? Uh, how would you phrase it? Naivety? Is that a word? Naivety? Naivete. Naivete, yeah. That That is over. <laughs> you make because it fancy, he, sir. Right, yeah. <laughs> because he's so young and because he has been so successful right now, he hasn't had any time. He hasn't had any, like, really drastic life experiences. Even his background is coming from, like, not a, what's the name? Not a, he didn't have a hard upbringing. His, no. his parents are pretty, like, they're pretty well off. I mean, they're middle class, upper middle class. So he hasn't really had any like struggles, which is kind of interesting in that documentary to see the fucking crazy stark contrast between like Twenty One Savage over here and then like Little Yachty over here. But <laughs> after like hearing that interview, like I can believe him saying that he's happy or that he feels like he's happy because he's had a nice little bit of a success. Um, he's got sponsors that like there's no way in hell he'd be able to pull if he wasn't like that kind of clean image. Um, but his music, I don't like his music. They love, I, I, the couple songs I found funny, uh, but that's about it. But I think it seemed like a little bit more of an overreaction on Joe Buttons, but I see what Joe Button was trying to say. I just feel like he could have said it in more of a, don't want to say like a mentor way or like more of a, like I'm older. I have more, I guess more of like a, almost like a, <laughs> I guess you could say a fatherly way where it's like. Trust me, I have experience. You may say you're happy, but you could, you are, you probably are happy right now. But, but basically, say it like you're happy now, but be careful. Don't let your happiness blind you from somebody either trying to screw you over or all the shit in this industry that could go wrong. Yeah. And I wish he would have just like literally worded it that way, that simple adjustment as far as in tone and everything. And I think you, you wouldn't have all this like kind of like backlash mm-hmm. or like kind of people like funny like laughing at him but it was just he was so angry about yeah. it that's when it seems like it's like what like there was nothing there from little yachty side to it's yachty yachty i always say that yeah 
<laughs> I was going I was going to let the first time slide, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh there's no there's nothing on that side from uh from his from Lil Yachty's side to like I guess warrant that level of like anger and animosity. Yeah. And it just felt kind of weird like he was so like mad. I could understand if like Lil Yachty was like like the old way of doing hip hop is garbage, whatever yada yada yada. And they kind of went well, from there. Which we kind of go well, yeah. which, that uh, that radio interview with uh, yeah. Ebro. I want to say Ebro yeah. in the morning or which something. Which he like did that. say yeah. something along those lines. It wasn't really like that. It's garbage. It's just like he couldn't understand why such and such was this. Yeah. Which is kind of funny because like down the road, like I guess probably about a month after that, he went back and was like, "Okay, I sat down and I listened to a lot of the older stuff, and I realized like I'm wrong. I apologize." Which is, I mean, that's another oh, yeah, thing yeah. of like showing like, okay, like. He's not just like firing off of the mouth and being an asshole. Like, if he says something like that, he might literally be lacking the knowledge. And the fact that he took the time out to go, like, everybody seems real mad that I said that. Let me go see why everybody's so mad. And then he found it and he was like, all right, my bad. Like, that shows a level of maturity you yeah. usually don't see. So, like, there's a lot of things, I guess you could say that, like, in this particular case, that were kind of working for, uh, little yachty and working against joe button because it it beca- it's become easy to be like joe button's the old grumpy rapper he's the mm-hmm. old head whatever he's just mad at the young guy which is fine and danny whatever you want to say like that but it mm-hmm. just it seems in my case i was more like well yeah let it, if he's happy let him be fucking happy it's fine <laughs> it's not hurting anybody like he's literally not hurting anybody in the most bubblegum basic sense of the word he's not hurting anybody <laughs> He's just goofy, and he he found a way to market himself in a very specific way that most people who are trying to be MCs wouldn't fucking touch because they'd be <laughs> because they'd probably be like, no, that makes me sound like a either I'm, I'm weak or a pansy. I want to be hard. I want to be err. <laughs> and like Hilly Yachty's like, no, like fucking, I'll dance around on an ice rink with a bunch of fucking stuffed animals and like, yay! <laughs> so it's it's weird. It's 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 funny, man, how it it works like that yeah. and how. He, uh, Lil Yachty, has kind of evolved in my own personal opinion. Because um, most of the time I just don't like them, and I usually have my reasons, either it's just musically, and I just leave it at that. But by watching that documentary, it kind of helped, I guess, evolve my opinion on most of those MCs. Like, okay, like because you, it humanizes them. You see why they are the way they are. It's really easy to just listen to somebody's music, not like their music, and be like, eh, they're, they're fucking garbage as a person because their music I don't like. Yeah. It's very easy to do that. But what did you guys think? All right. Um, here's a few takeaways I had with it. It's like this damn pop up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let me, should I go ahead and. Just... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. All right. <laughs> all right my first thoughts when i caught it is that um i only saw the memes first before i even went through, i went through the trouble of watching the video and just off of that just off of that from the beginning i was like wow joe budden came across super bitter and just especially about the whole bit about being happy which was hilarious because like this dude had mixtapes called mood M- or mood music which mm-hmm. i thought was <laughs> which was even funnier is like he's like an emo rapper but not at the same level as like a uh, Lil Uzi or something like that but he and it's kind of funny as hell for him to sit there come across like no I don't believe you this is um, this, no this can't be true This th- there's no way that somebody's ha- happy 100% of the time and so I actually watched it it was about a 45 minute episode and 20-30 minutes of that was strictly involving uh, the conversation that particular conversation between Yachty and uh, Joe Button and after watching it, I see now where it was more like DJ Academics and Twitter were more or less putting words into his mouth. They were more putting their idea of an old bitter rapper in his or in his or in his mouth as far as with those clips and only taking those particular clips, which are funny as hell, right, regardless, yeah, especially with the nigga. <laughs> chill yeah he was, that bit is that, he was like right it's funny it is funny yeah. kind of, especially we didn't go through there but um as you notice or throughout the conversation um joe budden is super fucking passionate when it comes to hip-hop oh yeah when it is. comes to his when it comes to his craft yeah and i understand as far as him to fly off the handle like it was mm-hmm. he shouldn't have did it yeah he shouldn't have did it right. but i now it's like i get it as far as him trying to look at this guy or looking at yadi as far as this person that is clearly backed by the industry and yeah. joe budden has such a huge disdain 
for industry for record labels. Yeah, that's true. And that's what made him look so irrational. That's what made him look like he's just flying off at the handle mm -hmm. at something so simple. It's like little yada. It's like mm, I don't believe that. I feel like the um, I feel like that was an industry fed line. I feel like you're sitting there being told what to do. I don't like something just doesn't like just yeah. irked him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for him right. to sit there and just try to poke and prod, you could see that he was trying to pick his brain to see where, try to mm -hmm. see who Yachty was as a person, who Yachty was as an artist. Mm -hmm. Where does he stand? Where does he see himself as far as hip hop goes? Right. Um, and let me see what else. Um, him asking like simple shit about uh, the label as far as like, um, do you know about 360 deals and this, that, and the other. He was like really trying to poke at him. And it's just yeah. like, I don't think this is the platform for that. Yeah, is this the hill and, you want to die on type thing? Well, no, it's not even like the hill you want to die on. It's more of a like, mm, can't y'all do that off camera? Oh, yeah. Because okay. in a yeah, sense, it's kind of like, it's kind of like somebody asking you, well, how much do you make? Right. And it's yeah. like, mm, that ain't, that ain't, no, <laughs> this hold is on. not that the ain't, place. This yeah. ain't the place. And right. why do I want to share that with you? Right, exactly. Right. Uh, so there's that. And mm -hmm. as far as it's, it's still funny. The memes are still pretty damn funny. But yeah. as far as I now got a better understanding after watching that video where Joe Button was trying to go, he mm -hmm. just failed at execution. At the execution. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, um, Viewing this, I didn't get to see the whole thing, uh, the whole um, piece. But when I watched this, I actually didn't have a problem with Joe Budden um, flying off the handle. Um, because I, I agree with you, Webb, that execution could have been better. Mm -hmm. But there was something that irked him. Right. And from that standpoint, when he was basically saying, like, don't bullshit me. Like, I came up to you, like, don't don't come into my face or, you know, here and lie and bullshit me. Mm -hmm. Like, that's disrespectful. Right. So that's when, like, to me, all the passions came because, I mean, if I felt disrespected, you're going to see a different side. Like, it's going to it's gonna escalate, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. But um, he, I think his actual thought on happiness, like being fickle, I think that's kind of, that's kind of real. Uh, I do agree with you, Gary, that he could have tried to come off more as a, like, um, sensei, a father figure, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I, I don't think that was the goal of this. Like, he was literally no, no, like, no. come on, nobody's ever happy 24-7. Right. Every 365 days. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody. It's right. not possible. Right. And then I feel that's the same way when you ask somebody, like, how you doing? And then people keep smiling in your face and really they're, like, broken and everything, you know, all around. Or it's like a hurricane in their life and, like, they're really sad and depressed. But all they do is, like, game. smile and give you the, like, ha-ha, everything's great. I'm super happy. Uh -huh. Like, you would almost, you know, sometimes it's a slap in the face when you're like, hey, I was literally asking how you were doing. Like, I was trying to be there for you if that's the situation, you know, if you know him like that. Right. Um... So I actually, I don't see it as he did something wrong. Like, it may have came off wrong. The, the memes are hilarious. But <laughs> I, I was with them. I was like, come on. Like, nobody's 100% happy. Right. Like, but when he gave his reasons for being happy, he was like, man, uh, you go to school, something in college, you ain't got no money. Right. Uh, ain't, no, ain't no girls want to get at you. Right. And he was like, you ain't got no car. Now you're making millions, this, that. I was like, so yeah, right now he's in that blissful place. Honeymoon period. Yeah, because mm -hmm. he like that's where he is. Right. That's not to say that maybe one day of the week when he's tired or whatever, he ain't he ain't sad or you know just not happy. It's just like his overall feelings is probably happy. Right. Just because you know what he's looking for right then as a 19 year old is money, cars, and women. women. Mm -hmm fun yeah, you know absolutely so i think just joe budden coming from a different perspective um that joe budden i don't think he was in the wrong in any way like i, I just feel like you know you got an older man talking to a younger person it's almost right. like you talking to your own you know somebody younger than you and you're like come on man like you think that you think that's what's happening but mm -hmm. you you're not looking at the full picture like right. you're you're looking at one aspect the, all the positives. If you look at all the positive right now, you're going to be like, yeah, everything's great. Right. 
Yeah. But yeah. what happens when the girls ain't around? You ain't driving the cars right then. Mm-hmm. Are you still dancing, jumping up and down? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you I know. forgot to I forgot to add something about when he asked what? him about the 360 deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he asked him this because uh, Yachty has actually gone on record and straight up said, I don't know who handles my publishing. Yeah, he has. Which the inter- Here's the thing. This is the other interesting thing about little little Yachty in general, is he's had all these moments where it's like he lights the fuse of destruction, but then either he tamps it out or it fizzles out, or somebody else like comes and fizzles it out, because the whole three sixty deal, like Mission Impossible, yeah, like somebody with the little like, fuse, yeah, and somebody, then somebody yeah. just keeps doing that because it's so like first off, he has a lot of potential to turn the imaging that he's created and everything into long-term financial gain. If he's Mm -hmm. smart enough to do it and he's very young now, so he needs people to help him. And I think he might have some people that can now the whole thing with, uh, what you were saying about, um, not hand, not, not, not knowing who's handling his publishing. Now on that front too, like with the 360 deal thing, there was an article that came out a few days after the, uh, interview, where uh, somebody did like an in depth like research. I think it was my, I don't know if it was DJ Booth, the guys over there that write really good articles, or who it was. But basically, they came out and said Little Yachty's deal actually isn't a 360 deal. He actually owns everything of his. Hmm. Like all his shit is in his name. Okay. Which is very so, fucking good. And close call. Yeah. yeah. And I mm-hmm. think it's because he is a, like I said, he's not, he has, he has a family of support that are letting their young child basically do their thing. But at the same time, when it's time to do the business shit, the grown up stuff, quote unquote, behind the scenes, his mom's there and yep. his dad's there. Like, like, look, like the Yachty needs his money and stuff and he's going to do his songs and stuff, but we need to make sure all this shit's buttoned up on the backside because we'll, we'll tell him, Hey, this is what's going on. You have you're getting this much money from this show. You're getting a smiley face and three hundred thousand dollars from this show, and a smiley face in this. And that's all you need to worry about, Yachty. Go have fun. And then they're on the back end, buttoning up, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and everything. And I think mm-hmm. that's what's fucking helping him mm-hmm. uh, because he has a family. He has a support. He has a very good support. And I saw that in that documentary. Like his mom was right there. Like his mom didn't want him to do it at first, like any other mother. Because, but what made her kind of switch is like he came there and was like, "Look at all these fucking people, all these followers I have, and stuff." And she was like, "Wait a minute, there's like a million people commenting and following my son and listening to every one of his songs. There could be something here." And mm-hmm. from the beginning, that initial wall of doubt has evolved into careful calculated financial decisions that seem to be working out i mean he's got sponsorships with target never would have fucking happened if he was dirty (laughs) if he wasn't a clean mc and then he's also the main fucking image like he's the the face of nautica which is a brand that we used to have when we were younger that is now making this comeback through little yacht through little yachty which is very interesting I'm interested in a long term to see what happens with him. Right. Because I hope he's successful. Because the thing is, you have this kind of like outside looking in perspective where it's like he does kind of whatever throwaway rap, which usually leads to stupid decisions, which usually leads to success just fucking tanking. Which is normally how you can kind of cut and dry sum that up and just look at it that way. Mm -hmm. But. He's got all these things working for him behind the scenes, this family support system, it seems like, that are helping him stay kind of on the course until he can get to the point where he's mature enough and stuff to look at it through his own eyes, the whole thing, and be like, all right, I know what I need to do. I know what decisions I need need to make. I know I need to still keep my image this way, whatever, and whatever. So, yeah, it's it's very interesting to see and think about the potential or the stuff that he's already gotten and where it could go. But we will see. Only time will tell. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, 
that was a super loud hey. That was like it's like oh, spiked. it peaked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess uh, have we have we said our piece regarding Joe Button and Lil Yachty? I think so. All right. Yeah. Then, fair enough. Pump, pump, um, pump it up. In relation to hip hop, or as uh, Brent said earlier, for the culture. Do it for, for the, the coach. For the culture. Do it for the. Uh, do it for the culture. In another edition of Wait, I'm White, What Did I Do Wrong News. Yay! <laughs> it's always a good place. Uh, two up. editions, as a matter of fact. Oh, nice. First off, we got a full let show. Me... <laughs> <laughs> we got a full show. All right, so first off, we have Yes Jules, a party promoter and head of some type of marketing agency. All I know her is from, you know, just thirsty ass dudes, and they're just taking her or showing pictures of her or mm-hmm. commenting on pics of her and uh, defending her when she says some outlandish shit. Mm-hmm. Um, she got a lot of flack recently, which, I mean, what else is new for her? But this time, this right. actually uh, had a little bit more of an impact. Uh-huh. She got a lot of flack for posting a picture of a shirt that says, niggas lie a lot. Oh, Jesus. And she was asking. <laughs> whoa, so, whoa, That's all Brent's <laughs> in a tweet, <laughs> And in a tweet, she posted the picture of the shirt, yeah. which, um, as I think was explained by one of the dudes defending her, try to cape for her, uh, was somebody who was, had designed the shirt. And sit there and off and was sitting there trying to, I guess, network and market and sit there trying, hey, you should wear this. Yeah. And then she tweeted it out. So am I allowed to wear this at the festival tomorrow or nah? Uh huh. Well, nah. it she- appears it's black Twitter said nah. <laughs> <laughs> after nah. enough after so so many comments expressing their outrage on this tweet uh yes Jul- yes jules got pulled from two toronto events which was i think it was like a music fest and a summit of some type um with that said her mm-hmm. being pulled from those events and all the backlash she got from that tweet mm-hmm. she this led to a 90 second tearful in my opinion non-apology on snapchat Mm -hmm. which um i wish i could sit there and play a clip of it for y'all um i actually had it on my youtube history i could probably send it to y'all go from there um it was pretty well she was crying and sitting going like i apologize i i realized i fucked up and it didn't look it looked like it was just putting on a show because can we just immediately go ahead and discredit any kind of apologies that go on snapchat because that shit's not finite (laughs) that's the whole point of snapchat is that it disappears after so long it this one didn't okay people (laughs) uh, people people copied it it's on it's they got several (laughs) people got several videos of it on youtube there's several instances of it on twitter people made sure people kept receipts on this shit that's good yeah people kept receipts on this that's what you got to do nowadays and uh as far as uh this was about uh, about a minute and a half i think and uh-huh. when you realize the absolute longest time you can do on snapchat is maybe 10 seconds if i ain't mistaken yeah yeah and so 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 she had to do this about nine different times hitting the holding the record button oh, yeah, that's doing again. her apology oh, yeah, so that's why i felt that. this was that's why i don't feel this was very oh let me say subjective while i'm telling the genuine <laughs> let me say let me stay uh objective while telling this as i should say um so 90 second apology on snapchat mm-hmm Next bit, mm-hmm. this could probably coincide with it too. Uh, also, this past week, Miley Cyrus announced her upcoming single in an interview while also expressing her disdain over misogyny in hip hop. Now, okay. do y'all want to talk about this as a whole or one at a time? What are y'all thoughts and, or comments, concerns on this? You want to do it as a whole, Brent? I think we can tackle it as a whole. We'll tackle both of them at the same time. All right, then. cool. All right, that works. Right. That works. Cool. So, okay, yeah. let me go ahead and uh, start this off um, because I kind of already bled that into the my, into the introduction. Yeah. Um, excuse me. First of all, um, I can't stand seeing simp niggas uh, defending Jules. In right. my in my opinion, I'm stealing from somebody from simp is like someone idolizing mediocre pussy. Um, God, it's so good. <laughs> That's it's just they so are always. Good. It's just like these dudes that are <laughs> constantly. That hurt Brent. <laughs> <laughs> Brent, for the listener, Brent is hurt. Like, he just heard the best Jeez. rap lyric ever. <laughs> Don DeMarco. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> That's so yeah. good. Genius, sir. That's Don perfect. DeMarco for that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's well, That's not even mine. That's a uh, shout out to, I won't say it because there's backlash for that person. That won't be the last time mm. we use that word. Yeah. Um, so sure. it's, it's all these dudes that are constantly caping for Yes Jules that get on my nerves. As far as them sitting there acting the way they did, it's going to like, oh, yeah, it's like, no, nah, she's good. She's good, blah, 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 blah. Right. And it kind of looks like um, and it kind of looks like they're a type of person that is just kind of caping them just for the color of her skin. As far as, uh, you know, that type of I don't want to say sunken place because that's being used in the wrong context. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. 
and as far as as I was already saying with Snapchat, I felt that that was a non-apology, in my opinion, right. yeah. uh, because once again, you have to hold the record button for 10 seconds while you say something and the snap ends and you got to keep right. it. And she had to do that nine different times yeah, in order to get that apology out right. and to post it up there and publish it. So that didn't feel as genuine, especially when like she was trying to look like she was crying each rip. It's like how do you, somebody said, like, to start to so how do you cry? It's like how do you cry in ten second intervals? And somebody said, <laughs> and, right, I'm and I just I um, uh, sooner we get her out to paint the better. And it's right. looking like as shit's piling on, as mm -hmm. far as her comments like uh, last year regarding stuff like, oh, uh, why is else? it when I go into what's that? Did she do something else? Oh yeah, she's done plenty of shit. Oh really? Okay. Uh, so well, I mean, people don't like the fact that she comes across as a culture vo culture vo culture vulture. vulture, right? Okay. Culture mm -hmm. vulture, vulture. There yeah. we go. Uh, as far as you know, appealing to uh, black people only when it comes time for you know making money. Well, I mean, granted, she's a party promoter, so you know that's kind of there's a demographic. But in right, the sense yeah. that feeling acting like you, I don't want to say like you belong, but acting like you are cool and don't have to worry about any consequences for acting a certain way or saying a certain way or doing a certain thing right. that uh, is normally associated regarding black people. Mm -hmm. And plus mm -hmm. there was tweets uh, that she made out where she was going like, oh, black women hate me because black men love me and shit like that. Or other Jesus. comments like, why is it when I walk into a room uh, where there's a bunch of ethnicities, black men are beeline to get to me or something like that. Uh, one of the... Here's the thing that bothers me about it. anybody who ends up in this situation in particular where you have like whatever white person does something stupid that's they should have fucking known better. The mm -hmm. the constant loop of uh consistent ignorance is the thing that just annoys the piss out of me about like anything like it's like why did you not understand obviously that you shouldn't put on this shirt? Period. I don't give a damn if you're in your house. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody could drive through, drive by and look in your blinds and see you with the shirt, you know, like, I don't understand how you don't obviously understand and know and recognize this shit. Like, that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's not that it, it comes down to like my experiences with the people that I have surrounded myself with throughout the years. Mm -hmm. And I say this and it might come off a certain way. But it's and it might be completely wrong because we have a lot of example, examples of it not being correct. It's not that fucking hard to have some level of intelligence, social intelligence, especially. Mm -hmm. That's the easy one to get normally, especially for you to be as big as you are on social media. Right. Exactly. Like, why don't you understand? Like, why? Like, how do you not have that voice inside you that obviously like lets you know, like in especially in this day and age? Like we've talked about multiple times before, where we have this outrage culture. Mm -hmm. You should be scared to fucking wear anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like you should you should be afraid of wearing a white hoodie because it might look a little racist. Like there should be so many shit firing off at, at one time. So like that's my thing. I'm like, why do you, like how can you not like have the intelligence to just stop look at this? I'm like, well. Honestly, hmm. it's prop what probably what it is is that it's too many niggas or pardon me. No, 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 no. I need to avoid this. <laughs> now the problem is <laughs> oh, you I, was like, I was like, where are you going with this? No, 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 no. Not no, let me reword this because I don't want to sit there and say niggas like it's it's all. Right. It's like, all it's like yeah, right. it's like that's the problem with y'all black men. It's like, no, who who the fuck is y'all? Right. Uh no, there's there are certain black dudes that are sitting there just idolizing her simply for the fact that she as far as like that beauty standard. That mm -hmm. we kind of did or discussed a couple episodes ago, right? Exactly. Where here it is. Oh, we got a fat, or we got a white woman with a fat ass, right? As a, as far as you know, thirsty, like the thirst, and just being so damn real as far as allowing, giving, trying to give her a pass for shit, right? Like, and what that's is... exactly what it is. I feel like that pass mm -hmm. that simple that simp ass niggas kept giving her mm -hmm. is what got to her head, where she thought she could sit there and just Get do something without stuff. impunity. Okay, well that makes sense. I guess you could That's, say. That, I mean, that I'm speculating. Make, that speculating. makes sense though to explain the fact that if you're constantly treated a certain way by whatever mm -hmm. in certain situations, that you'll get to a point where you're less, you're desensitized to the shit that should be obvious. Basically, is the way it comes up. Brent, what do you think about this? Which part do you want me to? Uh, Jules. Well, if about we were... Jules. About the about the the shirt. About 
basically wearing about if okay so whatever <laughs> I don't even know how to say it if, if we're talking rule of thumb if you have to ask you never know like they said on hey arnold right <laughs> no if, if you, you have know, to ask it's a bet like then don't do it right yeah, yeah like that's if good. you have exactly. to ask don't do it like you already know right that this is on the line if if nothing else this is on the line it can go either way if it's 50 50 yeah, don't. don't do it. Walk away. Take a safer mm-hmm. route. Mm-hmm. All right. You could tell she was um, kind of doing it to try to be cute about it. I right. felt like because yeah, I think because I'm pretty sure there was like a smiley face or a wink or something at the end of that tweet. But whatever. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> and then her tweet <laughs> apology was whack too. It was like I see. I knew I fucked up something something. I was like I stopped reading because it said something about I knew I fucked up. Sorry. I was like I I don't want your tweet apology about. I fucked up. Like you knew this, as you put this bullshit uh, shirt up to say. Um, I think shouts out to the um, the businesses, the festivals mm-hmm. that dropped her. Yeah. For make for making like a bold move because they could have just been like, hey, that was just a shirt. You know, it's just a shirt. I've been like, look, they didn't do that here. Right. Whatever. Or but they, oh, we did, or we didn't. We what, what are you talking about? Yeah. Or yeah. just com- right. been completely yeah, yeah. oblivious to but, it. But you know. And see that, somebody where their pockets are. And that tells me that they're smart enough to look at that situation and realize that something was wrong. Let's get the hell out. So she should have the same fucking there's no excuse, basically. I, that's my whole that's my whole argument is there's no excuse. Like what you said, Brent, if there's any doubt, if it's 50-50, take a safer, safer route. It'll be better for everyone. There's that yeah. shirt did nothing. Now, <laughs> for now, um, for uh, America. <laughs> my only question was, Anytime. why didn't she just wear the shirt? Like, if she was gonna post it, like, why didn't she just wear the shirt? Yeah, and I almost feel like if she, she was, didn't yeah. care so much, she was right. proof- she would have just wore the shirt. <laughs> she was, proof- she was proofreading for an ass whooping, <laughs> is what it was. Huh? She was previewing. She was She's proofreading a- or previewing. Uh, it was a screen test to make sure she wouldn't get uh, ass whooped. She was proofreading for an ass whooping. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I like. my ass. Uh, cash this check. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> okay. Overdrawn um, immediately. But that's why I looked at it. I was like, why was this a tweet? Like, most people who who are going to go this route would have just worn the shirt and then took the backlash later. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which I would almost like, rather her just... They just went it. all in. Like, <laughs> I didn't think anything was wrong. Blah, blah, blah. Like, right. I'm just trying to help promote. I didn't say it. It just says it on the shirt. Right. And that the fact that she proofread the ass whooping, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> that makes me feel like that what you said, Brent, she knew that 50-50 was there. Yeah. That's why yeah. she did it. Like, if but she would have truly just played or been ignorant, then she would have just wore it mm-hmm. and be like, oh, I don't see what the problem is. Yeah. And then people would have been like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And then she'd be like, oh, dang. But then that would, but see the thing is, then she would have had no room for the crying Snapchat if she would have just wore it. But she could have, she could have, because she could have wore it and then be like, I was trying to help promote another person. Okay. How am I? Like I respect that person and their business that I supported it myself, yeah. right? Okay. Or whatever, like whatever she wants company. to say. The message was really for she can get real, uh, you know. Well, it ain't gonna get too politically correct with it, but she could <laughs> right. word it in a way to be like. You know, this is against ignorance and stuff like that. I'm not calling out a certain right. subgroup of people or any type of person, this and that. Mm-hmm. Like, she could have worded that right. as a PR standpoint to get out of that. Like, she would have to take the, the huge slap on the wrist, uh, you know, right. the, the, the spanking or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, like, she could have cried on Twitter and been like, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. And then be like, the backlash was so much that now she's emotionally... Like right. changed or whatever BS. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. there was ways out of that. Like, she had loopholes to get out of that. Plus, right. she probably would have won a couple people over by saying, "I was doing this to support." Blah blah blah. She, as long as she kept making somebody else the like, I'm promoting such and such. Whoever made the shirt or whatever. this, maybe, yeah. and you know, hopefully, if they were a black, you know, black owned business company, whatever. Like, I'm supporting them, my friend, such and such. Yeah, I can see. What people would have been like, all right. I would support, you know what I'm saying? Like still stupid, but yeah. Yeah, still yeah, stupid, no, but yeah, it'd have been like yeah, absolutely, like you were supporting saying. somebody you you cared or you know, somebody else's business. Like you wasn't doing this to create, <coughs> you know, mischief or violence or whatever. That might have softened anger the blow people. a little bit. So she could have got out of it. It was mm. just I, I just looked at that tactically. I was like, This is stupid. Yeah. 
It's my favorite family to live with. So you get what you deserve. The niggas. <laughs> the niggas. <laughs> you niggas cooking bacon? <laughs> my favorite ass to deliver to. The niggas. <laughs> the niggas. <laughs> so, uh, but okay, yeah, that was a great skit, though. So that's a, <laughs> <laughs> it was, classic, one of my favorite man. skits on that whole classic. Uh, I want to get classic. between a nigga and they bacon, might get my fingers bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they smell so fucking stupid. Oh, uh, but as okay, so I think we've said enough about Jules. Um, hopefully, the world has after this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't so, know who she was until now. Oh, yeah, well either. then, yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, just don't. Yeah, just don't worry about oh, it. Oh no, she's back off the radar. Yeah, unless you, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, unless... I checked though, but I was like, eh. <laughs> I just threw the right. compass in the river. <laughs> and, oh <laughs> well, here out. I will add this little tidbit here. Um, after okay. that controversy with Jules, uh-huh. uh, people mm-hmm. started posting pictures showing um, how she used to be connected with uh, LeBron. Oh, word. Oh. And um, you remember that line that Pusha T says, like, like that Bron Bron, Bron had, had that a long, long time, time ago. ago, but naked on the balcony. Yeah. Is that her? People ah. have been alluding to it. People yeah. have been alluding to it. Mm. Like that and people make, and like, like that's, that's see, cool. like, the problem with me fucking with this now, or with this whole controversy regarding Jules, is that that's I nice. had to engage into spilt tea Twitter, and I cannot stand spilt tea Twitter. Because, like, yeah, and now here it is. Uh, this little controversy here is just throwing that out there. It's like, hey, that's why LeBron ended up having to move from Miami to Ohio because his wife wasn't having that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I like that idea. That's good. Get so, out. so that's so yeah. So just throw that out there because I just because I had to sit through that. Y'all here, enjoy that. Uh, so now on to Miley. As far as announcing, as far as go figure, announcing a single that hasn't even came out yet. Mm-hmm. which um, apparently it sounds like it's going to be more of a country song type of deal. Here are my thoughts on it. As it's, it's, apparently she's trying to get back to her little country roots or what have you. Yeah, that's what I thought. She she's literally, like, she has yeah. literally said that she is trying to reach out to um, country Trump people. supporters. Oh, really? She straight Wait. out said Trump supporters. Hmm. Now, she, made, she tried to make it seem like, uh, she tried to make it seem like rah, rah, kumbaya type of style as far as trying to connect with people. It's like, yeah, just everybody connect and everyone's in there. Just get together and unity. And this, just that, say and everybody. Don't get specific. Yeah. Um, it's and dangerous. S- <laughs> and so. Um, she knew her idea. <laughs> yeah. She knew her audience. She wanted. She knew well, the, the thing audience. is, she's been hanging out with us for the past. Twerk, fucking, yeah, just doing, uh, she, trying she to twerk. And and just, she's yeah. trying to. That's what I should say. <laughs> she was not allowed My to bad. <laughs> You get your ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everybody was wanting her out to paint, and here she was, you know, sitting there just um, idolizing or sitting there trying to pretend. Everybody pretending like she invented twerking and this, that, and the other, and yeah. that's kind of going along the same lines of cultural appropriation, which she had that controversy about uh, back in what was it, twenty thirteen or something like that. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. So there's yeah. that. And then um, once she started getting backlash for her being or making complaints about, oh, this bitch is riding on my cock. It's like don't nobody, no one, no black person says cock. First, like, first of all. <laughs> Put your put your goddamn no. cock away. <laughs> Black people don't say. I don't want to see this. I'm I don't want to see it either. Bum, bum, yeah, he ain't never said that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, hey, girl, you want to see this cock? It's like, no what the fuck? Said no. Pimp C was like, no. Nah, <laughs> Closest we say is BBC, and that's only because that's the label that they use for that shit. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it's SEO friendly. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it easier. Oh man. <laughs> so wait a minute. This ain't news. <laughs> this ain't the news channel but no nah, um so and then once she got the backlash for it um guess what her go-to statement was no oh, lord uh as somebody pointed out this was her the go-to statement she used was that uh she loved kendrick uh, kendrick lamar's humble and how she she just loves kendrick lamar for his conscious rap this that and the other and as somebody else pointed out I'm like, what the fuck does it <laughs> Somebody made a tweet and they're going like not what we're talking about. Kendrick Lamar has now become the new most deaf. A la the go to rapper or racist or ignorant person says they love to throw people off the scent. Damn, that's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's really good, actually. Cause man, you be mm-hmm. like, you racist I, I no, no, I, I like most deaf. What because he yeah, was that person. Yeah, that's he true. Was that too. Per- at yeah. one point. He was yeah, that person. That's true. Yeah. Because um and, and, and. just this year alone, just because <laughs> just this year alone, that's very true. now that's Miley that's done that shit. And mm-hmm. um to my knowledge, I know for a fact that was Gerardo who threw that shit out there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh he was like, Oh yeah, it's like Drake and uh, Kendrick Lamar or the blah 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 for hip hop. It's like because he was just making comments m- uh, some time ago mm-hmm. regarding like this is the uh, that rap is one of the causes of the black communities being 
in the state that they are in now. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, so that. like, fuck out of here with that. Okay, so, I, was, I was like, we're not about to argue that one. I was no, like, no, it was the, no, it was the I comment. It was a comment. It was, no, it was a comment he made. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so here it is as far as, you know, um, back to Yes Jules and her giving her apology. She's only like, none of that shit would, did not feel genuine to me because she's making the shit after consequences of her money getting fucked up. Right. Miley Cyrus is now sitting there apologizing for the backlash because, but point blank period, her reaching out to the Trump supporters, mm -hmm. she's trying to get her money back up. She's trying to get that uh, Dollywood type money. Yeah. As far as, you right. know, like exactly. the Taylor Swift and et cetera, that right. type of money. Are you trying to get that going again? Mm -hmm. uh, throwing the, uh, you know, Jules throwing co crocodile, tear, crocodile tears <laughs> only because that was fucking her money up. Miley yeah. Cyrus trying to make sure her back door is secured. Yeah. Nope. Uh. That's kind of like a dirty pun. <laughs> no, we're trying to make sure her she has an out. Make sure she has an exit strategy. Yeah. In case this doesn't work, so that way she can get her money back when it comes time to. Uh, yeah. As far as going back to hey, add tongue out twerking on that or I lack brought of the a, weed back. <laughs> yeah. What, she was on something. It, they and, they were talking about her on because I always usually see this before I make it to work, but the talk is usually on, and they talked about that this week, where they basically said um. She came out and said she wanted to go for a cleaner image, and she was like, "I haven't smoked weed in like three weeks," and they kind of giggled because they were like, "It's only three to three weeks," but they was like, "Well, it's a start," and then like everybody was like, "How do you feel about?" Uh... And everybody in the crowd cheered because everybody in the fucking talk audiences. They love about, as, I, that's about I as vanilla as a goddamn ice cream cone. Because somebody will sit there, because I, it's just kind of going, like, somebody will say something, and because it's that particular person that is saying it, all of a sudden the applause, because yeah, it's like, it's yeah, exactly, yeah. It's, it's just, just like, they're they're so swayable. Yeah, oh yeah, easily. They they Because like the other day, like when Charles Barkley, Barkley got in that trouble, well not really trouble, because he like commented on, uh, what's the name, when like he was crying on the bench when he like found out that his sister had passed away oh, okay. in that car wreck. And the way he worded it, like a lot of people took it the wrong way. And then like they talked about it. And it was nothing. I was leaving. I heard it. And it's so good to like one be doing this podcast and hear that fucking show every day before I leave because it's funny to see how they construct themselves and how, like you said, swayable their audience is. Mm -hmm. But uh they were saying like, So what do you think? Did uh Charles go a little bit too far with his comments? And everybody yeah. in the crowd was like, Yeah. And I was like, get the fuck out of here, all of y'all. <laughs> I was like, like, oh, y'all can kiss Charles Barkley's ass. <laughs> you, you see the applaud sign. Right. Or it says, make noise. You make noise. Okay? Exactly. Exactly. Because there might be free shit at the end. Because <laughs> they're going to throw some, they're going to they gonna t shirt cannon some shit into your face. Um, it's not Oprah. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. So um, we said enough about Jules. Uh, God, so thoughts on Miley? Um, Miley I was, I've was. i been waiting on this to happen sooner. Like, I thought she was going to. Probably change back to her original, original you know, her roots. They probably got tired time. of her. She probably got yeah. tired of all the comments from white dudes and they're like, take, they're done with that black cock now. <laughs> I'm sorry. We don't say cock. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 so I'm just going to segue. Like, I, I'm not even going to. That used to be in the comment section. All, <laughs> oh, that used to be all over Don, those comment sections. Don DeMarco. Uh, <laughs> like, it. It's nothing new to me. Like, it's nothing new to me to see people take from another culture, you know, put their stamp on it, call it theirs or whatever, even if it's the same product. And then when kind of they get in that law, they go back to their, they take everything they just took from that mm -hmm. subgroup or from that thing, the original thing, original source, mm -hmm. and then go, I'm leaving it. I'm going to go back to doing what I was doing uh, right. originally. I want to take another shot at it. Mm -hmm. um, do I like it? No. But mm -mm. it's been done, like, throughout history. Like, it's, it's just something that's always been done, especially in music. Mm -hmm. um, somebody coming in, stealing from another person or stealing from another, uh, you know, sound, mm -hmm. making it theirs. They get popular off of that and then going in the later years, like, all right, I'm going to go back to my grassroots, all right? I'm going to do uh, folk. <laughs> do right. folk or dance and this, that, whatever it is. Uh, but my question is, is country, like, will country ever die off? Will country music ever die? No, I don't, no, so. I don't believe so. Because it's, I don't think it will. No, you know, as far as, th that's the, um, you know, white people need a, uh, 
lasting the latch uh, music genre to latch onto. And they need something to turn the. They need something to turn to real quick when they got Migos blasting out of their fucking truck, <laughs> and then they want to turn on <clears throat> something is, else real quick. I have a. It, can I ask one more? Okay. Yeah, is there a subgroup of cult of uh, country music that is pop cult pop country? Yes. Yeah, that's oh what Taylor, God. That's what you Taylor remember? Swift is. Or even okay. even okay. like um like motherfuckers like Florida Georgia Line and yeah. I don't remember yeah. um I can't stand them they're yeah, it's like they're it's, it's like that's not even it's, it's like even I'm sitting there going like no that ain't real yeah. country it's like yeah, well, yeah, exactly <laughs> that's yeah that's the funny because this it. reminded me um I'm pretty sure it was my wedding we were getting ready mm-hmm. for my wedding and um we were at the hotel mm-hmm. and we were watching music videos on mute on CMT oh yeah that's right and you remember that yeah. video where it sat there showed like these guys it was like. Wait a minute, is this a rap video? Yeah, yeah, we couldn't tell. Oh. We couldn't tell. If we it couldn't was tell a, what genre it was. Yeah, we could. It's like um, frat country, yeah, frat boy country music. I can't fucking stand. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. Florida Georgia Line is a prime example of them. Um, there's like some other cats too, but yeah. I can't it's, fucking stand that type of country. It's just like music. generally, I don't like country music, like pretty much across the board. But one <laughs> person that I do really like. It's Chris Stapleton. Oh, I would have thought George Strait. No, Chris Stapleton. Okay. He's from here. Oh, okay. Duh. He, But, like, the thing is, like, they could kind of play into that, and most people who were, like, country fans will probably say, well, then you probably will like George Strait because he's got that old-school country where it's more towards, like, gospel and soul than it yeah. is, like, the That's pop country. That's what I was going to say, soulful, yeah. Yeah. Like, like soulful country music, like, like I can fuck so with. Much shit, yeah, so yeah. much is good. And there's but, good country yeah, songs out the there. pop but, shit's yeah. fucking good. <laughs> So are we sitting there sound like old heads? I know, right? Old country heads, which is weird. But yeah, no, like, so yeah, like... Country purists. Yeah, I know, right? (laughs) So yeah, like Taylor Swift, Florida Georgia Line, those kind of people, the kind of people that head up that pop country, which that's what I'm confused about. I'm like, do you think you're going to go back and compete with Taylor Swift? Because she just smites all comers, like, with (laughs) with a swing of the wrist. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. and plus like on account of like on yeah. account spilt tea twitter saying she's underhanded as fuck so right and then and here's the other interesting thing i've seen molly cyrus cover like some like cover like fleetwood mac and shit like that which is not like i guess it's not really like nah. country that's more like classic rock like she's done like stevie Nicks stuff before yeah she sounds really fucking good when she gets in that lane and fucking locks in yeah and she doesn't try to do this weird hybrid hip hop pop bullshit like Mm -hmm. when she if she does the thing the problem is is we're looking at this with hindsight is if if she would just like be like all right i just want to do like i want to be like that i want to do like a stevie nicks type thing Mm -hmm. she probably could work that out but the thing is she's been shaking her ass and acting like an asshole for the past like fucking 10 years and now she's trying to like use this weird wording by like like you don't stop stop trying to pander just do it just fucking change. And then we'll be like, well, that was weird. And then if it's good, it's good. But if it's good that. after you, but if it's, if there's pandering on the front end of it, then people won't let it be good. Even if it is good, people are going to just like it out of spite that are going to dislike it. Uh, I think it's out of change. Well, that's, that's a hard to thing too. People are hard to, something that yeah. Yeah. once you say like, I, I would rather no artist tell me like, Hey, this one's going to be a little different. Because yeah, I'm already do that. Yeah. expecting like the worst, like different to most people is kind of on the same page as bad or lesser. Yeah, right. Um, it's in, not going to work sense. out as good. Yeah, uh, Andre 3000 cactus suits or <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so <laughs> like I would say I'm going to use Kanye West as an example. Like mm-hmm. he's changed sonically. Oh, God. A lot. With, mm. with his albums. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 100%. But he never really like until you hear it. Yeah, you don't know. Like when he changes, you find out when it drops yeah, or when he puts out some music, stuff like that. That's true. But if he told you like he was gonna go this direction or that direction, you'd be like, ah, I want the old Kanye. Right. Well, we still do, but well, yeah. yeah and but, even if, even if he like, said that, you'd be like, it probably wouldn't be the same. Like even if even if he came back out and was like, yeah, I'm gonna go back to soul sampling and stuff again, you'd be like, we'll see. Yeah, you called. Yeah, don't call your shot. Yeah, don't. Yeah. yeah, just surprise people. Just make the shot. Yeah, because yeah, if you focus on like making it, then it'll be good. Look, all I'm saying is do it for the culture, all right? <laughs> we don't need you pandering. We don't need you yeah, calling God. it out, yeah, the babe roofing God. it, pointing to the home runs like you're about to hit it out the park, and then you strike out, and then we're going to look at you like, 
why the hell was you in the batter's box to begin with? <laughs> yeah, or mm-hmm. or you try to point to the heavens and and do like a home run, then you get two strikes in and just bun it. <laughs> I tried. I sorry. I, that's all I could do. Yeah. Nigga, you almost you almost got thrown out on first. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna give you props anymore. You was talking all that shit before the game. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. not the way this works. Um, so you know, culture of vo- culture vultures beware. Um, oh, there needs one to be a good l- skit, a Spider Man skit, like a Spider Man spoof where it's like he's fighting the culture vulture instead of the. Why are you gonna sit there? Right. Don't throw that idea out. You called your shot before you sit there and swung. I bro. didn't say I was gonna do it. <laughs> not doing it for the culture. That's that's somebody could. That's gonna take a lot of special effects. You yeah. you're going on thirty. You need to learn you these. Back things. to oh, but, right. uh, one last <laughs> one last bit. That, one last little tidbit I want to add for culture vultures. <laughs> um, we overlooked one mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. just happened recently. Another blonde. Tell me more. Oh, what? Her name is Hillary Clinton. Mm. Yeah, now, yeah, because I mean, here it was. She was pan as far as it going back to that pandering to black uh, black audiences, pandering yeah. to the millennials and the youth and this, that, and the other. As soon as the decree came out that President Trump is in office, yeah. <laughs> but when the but yeah. when the world needed him needed her most, yeah. she vanished. <laughs> that was and see that was the biggest thing like going like that happened during this like election this past year was like. There was a lot of people that said they didn't like both candidates. Then there Correct. was a lot of people that said they didn't like either or. Mm-hmm. I was in the camp, like, now uh, that it's over, fuck it. Uh, I didn't really like either or because I was, I still had that firmly in my sights. I didn't really, I obviously didn't trust Trump to do the job. And then I felt a little icky about trusting Hillary, period, in yeah. some cases. And who, and like, as Simpsons used to say, um, or make fun of like election jokes and just mm-hmm. and the other, it was like, go ahead, throw your th- throw your vote away. As far as throwing, going for a third party, yeah, right, exactly. It's, it, it pretty much feels like you're throwing your vote away, exactly. And I and I like there were some good points. And I mean, this is kind of going back to political shit, even though it's like so I guess six months or hundred days in the hole, whatever. Um, but um, the thing is, the whole thing of having the freedom to vote is, I can vote however the fuck I want to. Mm-hmm. It's not a matter of like on either side of throwing it away. It's like if I want to vote this way, then damn it, I'm going to vote this way. That could be somebody else's judgment to throw it away or whatever you want to say. But like it's still that's the whole point of having the freedom to vote is that I can vote. I can fucking whatever. I can vote anybody who's on that ticket. I can vote for any one of them because it's my decision. What would you say? You can also write in a name. Exactly. I can write fucking. Oh, yeah. There was like a couple thousand that wrote in Ric Flair. God, that would be yeah. so good. <laughs> be I wrote so in a good. few people. Yeah. Everybody should have just wrote in The Rock. You think The Rock's going to win? I know it's kind of off the tangent. If but he goes for president? Do you think he will? Do you think he has a chance, I, a real chance? He's a Republican. Um, you know he's a Republican. I would have he is to a see what his political stance, popularity, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think yes. so. Because I think he could, the thing is he could get both sides. I'd rather not. I think he could get both sides. I'd rather he not, but. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't. I'm, I mean, I don't. As weird as it is, I mean, after the funny thing is, after Trump, then it's anything's like, possible. Yeah, yeah, they kind of like that was but the whole thing people talked about. Speech. Yeah, I mean, his and I think he could. Amazing. And but thing is, he is a Republican, which would be interesting to see. Like, if you would have this interesting shift, like from uh, sides, because I think he has appeal to both. But I think you would have a lot of Democrats that would probably look at him like, well. I'm Fuck it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I would support him if he, if you, like you said, if his platform was there, I would support him. But I'm not going to support him just because he is The Rock. That's where you get in trouble. Or if you're just like voting for him, yeah, I like The Rock. I like The Rock. The Rock used to wrestle. I like The Rock's movies because he's fast and furious. I'm going <laughs> to vote for him. Like, wait a minute, pump your brakes, dude. Like, make sure he actually knows what the fuck he's doing. Yeah, Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson is the greatest. Yeah, <laughs> so good. <laughs> I, 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 I love that skit. Come up on that first press yeah. conference and be like. You Rudy Poo candy ass. Yeah, <laughs> like he I just, just want him to drop one Rudy Poo candy he ass. Just peoples, he just people's elbows. That'd be his war in. talk. That'd be good, yeah. <laughs> We're about to go in there. Whoop, there you goddamn Rudy <laughs> Poo candy ass. I'm going to turn this bitch sideways <laughs> so good. and shove it straight up. <laughs> I'm just waiting at the debate where it's in there. Um, it's like, well, Mr. Johnson, what are your thoughts on blah, 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 blah? And we'll hear a blah, 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 case. Blah, blah, blah. And then he sit there and interrupts the moderator. Now, other candidate, what are your thoughts on that? It doesn't matter what your <laughs> thoughts are on this. <laughs> no, the, what, would be even, what would be even better if you see the middle of the speech, uh, like whoever is uh, running a poll, and all of a sudden you just hear the glass break. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's like, no. 
Then your opponent from the Democratic side, shh, they ain't de- like, oh my God. <laughs> I would have thought he'd be Republican. JR, I know. Yeah, that's the weird thing about it, right? JR's, JR's, the, the, JR's the moderator. Oh my God. We got a slobber knocker tonight. Right? Yes. Welcome to the 2000. <laughs> It'd be so good. Debate. We got ourselves a slobber knock. It's oh, gonna be a barn burner. Can we please just have barn like? Uh, can we please just have like <laughs> the candidate? It's like, it's like hey, Shane yeah. McMahon. It's like both the McMahons. The Rock's foreign policy. By God. <laughs> by God. <laughs> At that point, he's in slam stone cold through the table. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be like Vice Somebody President Sh- uh, Shane. No chance. Right. It's what y'all got. Oh, somebody just slams him a bit. Throws him a bit. Oh, oh Lord. The game. Might as well. Fuck it. Secretary. I mean, this election, uh, this election was such a show. I mean, we might as well just have a fucking WrestleMania election next time. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. It's so Horrible. Good. Mick Foley would come out the winner. No, what's the name would come out? Was We'd have a Kurt Angle drive out that milk truck again. <laughs> oh, wow. All in America. It'd be All good. All medals. Yep. That'd be mm. good. The Rock versus uh, a Democratic uh, Kurt Angle. <laughs> no. It is so oh, good. Lord. You make it Bret Hart, we'll make something out of it. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> or Sting, we'll just get Sting. We'll get Sting. It's fine. Oh, did you see? Ka- oh, this is speaking. Of, did you see Kane is running for uh, mayor of Tennessee? Mayor of uh, of uh, is that Knox County? Yeah, I think it's Knox County. Okay, what yeah. Did Tennessee and really look like. He looks like a just like a big white. He's dude. He's a libertarian, if I, if I yeah, recall. Yeah, he's a libertarian. Yeah. He's yeah, really? a big white dude. Oh, he's another like a wrestler. big bald white dude. Another wrestler, Booker T, is run, thinking on running for mayor of Houston. Yeah, oh, no, is that, that where he's from? Houston. Well, he's kind of he kind of got okay. roots in Texas. But, okay. Yeah. yeah, but Kane apparently Kane, his wife and his family and kids, they moved to Knoxville hmm. like a while ago. Loved it, and now uh, like he, you can go on YouTube and look at his uh, mayor commercial. It's good. That's tough. But like he just, I mean, he just looks like a big, like big seven foot, like just regular white dude. Yeah, seven foot politician. It's just <laughs> yeah. like you ain't gonna run across that many. Yeah, yeah really. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and he's gonna kill, kill the. Things. He's gonna kill the debate. He's gonna kill it in the debates. Oh yeah, that's the thing. Like you can. I mean, Aww. you're used to doing that. Like you're used to kind of being able. And to, like, he's speak a off super smart dude to begin with. Yeah, he is. Like yeah. he's got a hell of a. If I remember, he got a high, a super high IQ. Or I probably have to look that up now. But it's interesting because he never talked at first. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Booker T is built from Houston, Texas. Okay. So that explains why he would be running for mayor there. That's dope. Uh, so nice. you know, more power to him on that as well. Yeah. Well, um, guys, if we wanted to. Oh, wrap up or what you want to do? Oh, let me just add throw another thing on here. Yeah, um, as far as another person crying on social media, um, <laughs> Funk Master Flex oh, yeah. okay, was on a on. was on Sorry. Instagram Live for what was about forty some odd minutes, uh, okay. forty some odd minutes on Instagram Live, uh-huh. and at the thirty two mark minute, well, the whole thing was about his thoughts on Tupac. Oh, okay, um, he felt that Tupac lied about getting robbed. At that studio, some few or twenty some odd years back, which led oh, to that East Coast West Coast. Beef. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. And so F- Flex is upset that Tupac lied and cost Biggie's life. That's um, a very and the thing, interesting way to look at it. Yeah, and as far as the takeaway from it was around the 32 minute mark, where everyone started making memes and shit about him in tears mm-hmm. about it. And just basically, it was a lie. They lied. It was a blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I still got morals. I still got morals. And that's uh, pretty much the takeaway that um, everybody got from that one. Hmm. Um, so I thought it was kind of trippy as far as on account of another person on social media crying um, for the world to, ma- to make fun of. Right. Um, well, yeah, that's been a theme of the episode. Yeah, it's, emotions are running <laughs> high in hip hop as of last week. Right. So um, did y'all have anything, any takeaways from what I just discussed there? That's weird. The weird. That's strange that he would pick this platform now to like kind of come at and be like, "Hey, like, yeah, he's lying, whatever." And like, <laughs> it's just, it's very strange. It's odd timing. It just seems yeah. odd altogether. Because somebody, because Ti got on or got at him about this. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, Ti got him uh, at him because he was uh, he didn't like the fact that he felt this way or has this theory. Or believes this right, regarding Tupac. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, believes it. And like he wholeheartedly, apparently, for him to put it out there. Mm-hmm. And this ain't the first time he's actually said this. Okay. But for some reason, he wanted to address it as far as now that T.I. said something. And he was like, no, let me get this off my chest. Mm-hmm. And you know, the rest is meme history. That's very interesting. 
Brent, do you think anything about? It? Yeah, I think we. I think our connection dropped on on him. Is he froze? It froze yeah. and it says no. Yeah. Does it say no connection? Oh yeah, yeah it does say no connection. Okay. Well, hold on. Well, <laughs> uh, should we go ahead and wrap it up at that point? Yeah, we could probably because it says there's no internet connection, which is interesting. So. Uh, we could start wrapping up in just a second. Hold on, filibuster for me for two seconds. We'll all right, filibuster. Yeah. Okay, then. So I believe that's all that that's all that we have today, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That has been Oath Discussions. Please listen to us on Podbean, iTunes, Google Play. Now uh, that's updated. Uh, Stitcher, and we can put the audio episodes on YouTube as well. If you want to just let it auto play and listen to all the episodes before then, that will be appreciative. I am Mr. Webb, as they call me. Webb859 is my Twitter handle. Reach out to me there. Reach out to Brent at LLCoolB22 on Twitter. Uh, as far as Sir Good Sir Gary here, Catch him on KN Kid Swift on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Shayna, who was not in attendance today, unfortunately, reach out to her on Shayna B on Twitter, if I'm correct. Shayna N B. Shayna N B. Yep. There we go. On Twitter. Yep. And so that's all we have today. Thank Thank you you very much for listening, and you enjoy the rest of your day. Appreciate it. Peace.